day, we embark upon a journey of vengeance. Three individuals must fight to survive a battle in a war-torn city run by the most dangerous of gangsters. But these individuals don't settle the score with bullets and knives. They settle it with their fists. They must fight to survive. They are the only ones who can stop the man at the top. The one who runs organized crime, the government, the police, no one can stop him, but only they can be the ones to defeat him with the greatest of martial arts. Feet and fist, both hitting bone and flesh. Today on Mission Neo Geo, we discuss Fatal Fury. I, Tiberius co-host, will take you through this greatest of journeys, down Neo Geo's first fighting game, today on Mission Neo Geo. What it is, it's your guy Neo Ness back again with another Mission Neo Geo video. And today we are talking about Fatal Fury King of the Fighters. Yes, there are King of Fighters games on the Neo Geo. However, this technically is the predecessor to all of the King of Fighters games. This is technically where it really, the name generates from. So in Japan, this is called not Fatal Fury, but it's called Garo Densetsu. And for the King of Fighters portion of it, that's Shikume no Tatakai. So this game came out in Japan in 1991 as a head on head fighting game from the Neo Geo platform. And this was SNK's first fighting game for the Neo Geo system and it served for the very beginning for all things Fatal Fury and generally all things fighting games on the Neo Geo. MVS, AES, CD, it doesn't matter. This is what started it all. The basis of this game really follows a formula of most fighting games that you see. This game was actually designed by a former Capcom employee named Takashi Nishiyama. Nishiyama-san worked on the original Street Fighter 1 at Capcom and then soon after that was done left and wanted to take a different approach. Nishiyama-san wanted to take more of a story-based approach with this game. With that, he brought in the story of Terry and Andy Bogard. So in this game, there's only three players, three selectable players that you can actually play with. Terry Bogard, Andy Bogard, which those two are brothers. And then at the time, they weren't all friends, but Joe Higashi. Joe Higashi was a Muay Thai fighter. And by the end of this first game, they all become buddies. And then they go on throughout the series to, you know, the storyline of it kind of moves forward and progresses with their friendship, so on and so forth. So the formula of this game is you play uh, 1v1 and it's the best two out of three matches, your typical fighting game per usual joystick. And there's actually three manageable buttons. So the buttons that you're really gonna consist of, a punch button, a kick button, and then there's gonna be a throw button. So that's all you're using in this game. In terms of how fluid in the movement of this game is, it's very Street Fighter 2-ish. Back then when fighting games first came out, they were a little bit slower. It felt like they were floating in air when they were jumping. So it's not as fast paced and more in your face combo style as it is now with today's fighting games. This game could use input methods for special moves. So with Terry, for instance, we all know about the burning knuckle, the power wave, the crack shot, all of those different techniques. A lot of these were the first time that we saw these techniques in this series. Now, the most novel aspect of Fatal Fury was the addition of the two plane battles, basically meaning that you could jump 
back portion of the stage or the second plane and then the front plane so the front plane would be more in terms right in your face and then you're moving away from the camera onto the second plane and you can battle back and forth so let's say if your opponent jumps on the back end you could jump back there and continue to battle or you can cross connect with punches or kicks to knock your opponent down and wait after every other match in the single player tournament the player will participate in a bonus mini round which is basically just arm wrestling and you have to tap the a button as fast as humanly possible the first two times doing this it's pretty manageable the first time it's super easy you're just tapping the a button really good and you're done the second time you got to put a little extra power into it but by the third time that you're doing this bonus stage it's difficult your arms burnt out and you're really trying to tap the a button as fast as humanly possible and I never could win. So Terry and Andy completely took different paths in terms of their martial arts journeys. Andy traveled to Japan where he learned the ways of ninjutsu. And then of course, Terry stayed in the States learning his street fighting skills and then training under his mentor and of course friend to his father, Jeff Bogard, Tung Fu Ru. The Hakioku Seiken technique is one throughout the series that Terry masters on his own. And then of course, Andy takes his own, his own path with ninjutsu. Now with Hakio Kuseiken, if you're watching the anime, the, the animated movie, it's gonna give you more background behind the, the school, Tong Fu Ru, Jeff Bogart and Geese. Terry, I have chosen you over Andy to be my disciple. Do you know why? No. Why, Master? The Hakyoko Seiken School is based on the principles of nature. People like Andy and Geese are ruled by their emotions. They want to control nature, not cooperate with it. They could never use my techniques effectively. Terry, you must clear your mind of all emotion and desire. Yes, master. And there's a huge reason behind Geese, you know, wanting to be the master of martial arts, etc. So if you haven't checked out the Fatal Fury animated movie, definitely recommend it. Animation is great, even for it being back in the early 90s. It still holds up. There's actually a Blu-ray version that you can do um, both, both the, the first and the sequel. The sequel is a little different. It kind of takes place a little bit more in between Fatal Fury 2 and 3, and they just kind of blend a few things. So just take that to note. Now we've got all these characters, your three main characters, Terry, Andy, Joe, your challengers, Duck King, who's more of a, a hip hop style fighter. He's the DJ, he's, he's got everybody vibing in the club. That's the kind of character he is. Richard Meyer, who's more of the capoeira, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu dance fighting style. And then you've got Michael Max. Now, I wanna take a, a, deep, a, a detour here. Michael Max is Balrog, basically. In the States, we call him Balrog. Overseas in Japan, they call him M. Bison, which in general was Mike Bison. So that was the original name, but Mike Tyson, basically. So Michael Max, <laughs> get it, Michael, Mike, right, is Mike Tyson. And I love for the fact that we pay homage to two fighters throughout majority of the fighting game scene. So whether that's Street Fighter, Fatal Fury, Dead or Alive, Tekken, it doesn't matter what fighting game, there's always gonna be aspects of particular real world martial artists, boxers, etc. Mike Tyson just so happens to be one. You'll see Michael Max be the Mike Tyson style individual in this game, much like Balrog is in Street Fighter 2. Bruce Lee, we see throughout tons, throughout tons of different fighting games. Martial Law, Forest Law, and Tekken, Fei Long and Street Fighter, the list goes on. But in Fatal Fury, there are different characters also that have aspects of Bruce Lee, not necessarily in this particular game, but in later portions of the series, we do find characters that have Bruce Lee style techniques and they're utilizing nunchucks in the background. Tung Fu Ru, which we talked about. This guy is the first cheap 
fighter that you're gonna face in this series. And let, let me let me let me kind of break this down for y'all. You're gonna face three characters, actually four characters, throughout the entire fight of your game. So your series, whoever character you decide to choose. Tung Furu is probably going to be one of the first. You apply a little bit of damage on this guy and then guess what? He goes berserk, hulks out, and not only do you have reduced damage when you hit him, whether that's special techniques or just regular punches and kicks, he applies additional damage to you, which is insane. So he'll do this hurricane style punch kick thing. The best thing for you to do is just duck under that because you're going to take chip damage when he transforms. And then when you apply enough damage, then he'll transform back to the old brittle old man that we've that we've noticed when we first started the fight with him. He's one. Hua Jai, who's another more in terms of the boss. So there's three mini bosses, Hua Jai, Raiden, and then of course, Billy Kane. Hua Jai is your second cheapskate. Actually, no, you know what? There's five. One, two, three, four, five. There's five cheapskates in this game. I'm sorry, I messed up there. Ra Hua Jai, another Thai boxer, very similar techniques to Joe in some regards with the kind of the knees and all that kind of stuff. You apply enough damage, this dude, not only jumps to the side, but he'll have someone throw him a bottle of liquor that basically just juices this man up to where he is just solid red. And not only has his speed increased, his damage has significantly increased. And if you get hit by one of those crazy flying knees, you are in for a world of hurt. I am telling you, this dude will give you problems. So the best thing for you to do is stay close to him, apply rush down damage, and don't give him distance. Because once that knee comes flying, he is going to release. On to our next cheapskate, Raiden. He's going to be more of the... Zangief of Fatal Fury. He's the guy that's going to be more of the wrestler type. And I'll tell you this, this guy, if you get in close and he grabs you, it's 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 a it's a rough time for you because he'll grab you into that bear hug and he doesn't let go like it's amazing like I, there was one match where i fought him and he just i didn't even hit any buttons to see how long he would hold me my health bar was almost completely gone i'm like this is impossible why, why is this happening right now how's this guy taking me out like this and then of course you've got the vapor spray technique which why it sits there in the air for so long and can cause so much damage is beyond me either. So there's that. He grabs and grips you and throws you tons and tons of damage. Billy Kane. So Billy Kane uses a bow staff or more in terms his fighting style is bow jutsu. So with Billy Kane, he's got this whirling spinning bow technique that he throws at you and he's basically weaponless after this. So you think that you can apply some damage. Okay, he's weaponless, he's trying to guard himself. Guess what, let's go for the kill. No, it's an invincibility frame. You can't even damage him until he gets the bow staff back. So he has one of his minions or side guys that work for geese also. He's out in the crowd on the bridge. He tosses him a new bow and guess what? He's back to business. And he puts cheap range damage using his bow on you, which is insane. I tell you, it is insane. It drove me insane. So if you're playing this on a harder difficulty, be prepared to break some stuff because this game is not forgiving. You have to learn the patterns. And even when you do learn the patterns, sometimes these computers just pull some random combo out and not necessarily a combo, but they pull out these techniques that you just weren't expecting. So even back then, you gotta be careful. You've, you've beaten Billy Kane, you've won the king of fighters. So that's the end of the game, right? Wrong. You get kidnapped by Geese's henchmen and they bring you to the tower. Tower in the city. Geese is there at the very top of the penthouse. He wants to fight you. He wants to kill you and you want to take revenge. If you're using Andy or Terry, you want to take revenge for the death of your father. And now is the time. Now, 
geese is a problem. Geese has always been a problem in whatever game or version of Fatal Fury, Tekken, whatever, that we've seen geese as an introduction to a game. He is a problem. In this game, it is ridiculous. He has no openings, and you have to create those openings, and you have to stay on him. Don't leave him open. He could be standing there with his hands like this. Guess what? You throw a punch and kick, he's countering that, and that causes significant damage. I died so many times on Geese. It wasn't funny. It was just miserable miserable depths and trying to learn a pattern here he the replicant that he's throwing at you is this blue wave of energy that's flying but the speed is much faster than you getting off the power wave from terry right so in this particular case he'll launch one and guess what he'll come right back around and follow up again taking a look at the game itself this is the dog tag version of fatal fury one there are three versions of this on the aes so there's the dog tag version there is a euro version of this that does not have the dog tag on the spine or on the manual the background of the insert on the dog tag is going to be black and then on the euro version the it's going to be more of a grayish color from what we see on more of the the newer versions once they stopped doing the dog tag the manual not bad shape kind of gives a description and backstory over not only terry and andy but also gives a brief story on joe cartridge in not bad shape the card sticker is in pretty good shape and that's pretty good too in terms of pricing for this game you can get this game relatively cheap and that goes for a lot of the other fatal furies also if you're doing an auction or bid for this game fatal fury one can go roughly anywhere between 100 and 200 bucks which isn't bad that's relatively inexpensive and that goes for the euro version as well and if you're looking for a more mint condition copy where we're talking about the cartridge insert all that good stuff is looking really phenomenal you're probably talking about 250 to 275 bucks so this is not on the high side in terms of super duper expensive games which is good that's that that's that's a good thing so this is this is definitely one that i recommend for up and coming collectors who are just now getting into the neo geo you got to have a fighting game fatal fury is definitely one to have in the collection is it the best no not not by not by a, a long shot it's not so i'm going to go ahead and rate this right now fatal fury one on the neo geo aes i'm going to give a three yeah so it's 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 good and for the time it was well done but when you're comparing it to all the later fatal furies i mean you're never going to pick this up again but it's always good to start at the beginning and understand where you know the the game has come and grown to definitely great to see because even from the very first game to the very last fatal fury game you're looking and seeing different sprites being done. Like the, the, the animation, the background animation gets so much better through the life cycle of the Neo Geo. So definitely A1 there. So Fatal Fury 1 could be found of course on MBS, the AES, CD, Mega Drive, Sega Genesis, Super Nintendo, just to name a few, and that's quite a bit. Now, have you played Fatal Fury 1 on the Neo Geo AES? Yes, no, maybe possibly. Drop comments down below, let me know. And as always, collect and play the way that you want to collect and play your games. Tiberius, take us out of here. I, Tiberius co-host, give Fatal Fury a Tiberius rating of 3. I will agree with Ness today on his rating. It is accurate is a great game to have in the collection. The very first one has great history. This developer coming from Capcom, being the one of the original designers behind Street Fighter, a classic fighting game's own right. But this game, the series, has seen many polished sprites, background animations, techniques, characters, the list goes on. So with today, I give it a rating of three. Dearest friends, 
We thank you again for joining us this week on another Mission Neo Geo. I, Tiberius co-host, bid you thank you. And we bid you good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night to you. And for next week's episode, well, I'm not going to go ahead and give you a sneak peek into anything. You'll have to tune in until next Friday because it is to be continued. See you again.